Associate Professor of Agriculture and Resource Economics at the University of Connecticut and Connecticut Sea Grants Fisheries Specialist. Hi, Bob. Hi, Peg. We've been hearing a lot lately about socioeconomic assessments. What are they exactly? Well, I mean, a socioeconomic assessment is basically a way to learn about the social, cultural, economic, and political um, conditions and contexts of individuals, uh, communities, organizations that use and live um, near coastal marine resources. And so it's a way for us to basically, you know, organize and pull together information to help us improve how we do coastal marine management. So you're putting people into the picture. Very much so. I mean, one of the big things now that we're beginning to understand and others are beginning to understand is that when we talk about marine ecosystems, that they're really composed of both the, the natural and the human component. And, you know, increasingly we want to be able to bring that human component into our understanding of how we do management of, of, of coastal resources and, and marine ecosystems. I understand you do a lot of socioeconomic assessment in various parts of the world, is that that's, right? That's true, we do. Why do you do them? Well, what we're trying to do is basically we're, we're trying to learn um, more about the way that we do coastal management. Context of people, communities, organizations um, in developing countries so that we can um, improve the way that we do coastal management. Why is it important to include people in the ecosystem assessment? Well, I mean, in the past, a lot of coastal management really focused on the biophysical aspects of it. And, you know, we've come to realize that a lot of the problems and a lot of the solutions really rely on, um, on understanding people. And if we don't really understand the context of why people behave in the way that they do um, and how to influence that behavior to better manage resources, then we're not going to be successful. And so the only way we can do that really is to, um, is to try to, to learn, you know, how people perceive the resource, um, how people, um, what kind of occupations they have, uh, and all of these things which become important for us in terms of making better management decisions. And I understand that you recently co-authored a manual for socioeconomic assessment. Can you hold it up for us and sure. tell us what the purpose of the manual is? Uh, this is the manual. It's called a, a socioeconomic manual for, um, for coral reef management. It was co-authored with, uh, with Leah Bunce, uh, Phil Townsley, and, um, and Richard Polnack. And um, it was supported by the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network by um, uh, NOAA, um, uh, among others. And um, the purpose of the manual basically was is there was a, a, a companion volume on doing um, biophysical assessments of, tr of, of coastal resources, for example, coral reefs, mangroves, uh, seagrass beds, and people felt that there was a need for a similar type of, of socioeconomic manual. And so um, in 1999 and 2000, we put together this manual to, um, to really allow people to um, you know, have a, have, a, have a place to go when they wanted to try to learn how to do socioeconomic assessments. Um, what we found was that it was a, it was a little bit too comprehensive, actually. And, um, and subsequently, what we've done is um, put together a whole series of what we call SOCMON, which are um, basically socioeconomic monitoring guidelines um, for various um, regions of the world. This one I'm holding up now is a, is a SOCMON for Southeast Asia. We have one for the Caribbean. We have one for the West, um, the East Indian Ocean, um, basically East Africa, and we're doing one now for um, for the Pacific. And the idea is to try to take what was done here, which was a more general sort of technical um, guidelines and our manual, and and put ones together that are more um, oriented toward the regions and and the needs and the socioeconomic conditions of, of the regions. Well, it sounds like it's being very widely used all over the globe. It is, actually. I, I, um, I just came back from putting on a training in, um, in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. Um, 
couple months ago I was in the Philippines doing a training on it um, and I've, I've put trainings on basically all around the world. Um, there, there is a great deal of interest in, in, in people learning how to do sociogram assessments, especially from, you know, from physical, biological and physical scientists who are involved in doing management but realize that they need to understand more about the people. And, um, you know, it's been, as an economist, it's been, and a social scientist, it's been really rewarding realizing that people are starting to come to that realization. Yes. Well, I see you usually work with small villages in developing countries. Does this relate at all to Connecticut and New England? It does. I mean, we have a lot of small fishing villages here in, in Connecticut and New England, and, um, you know, we, we don't know, we know a little bit about them. We have census information, but we don't really know a lot about, for example, how the fishermen, how coastal um, landowners, how coastal resource users, really what their perceptions and attitudes are toward many coastal issues, toward many coastal problems, and the methods put here that are, that are used in the Philippines or India or, or Kenya are very applicable to better understanding um, the conditions here in New England and, and Connecticut in particular. Um, yeah, so I think, I think there's, there's a lot of applicability. Okay, thank you very much. Any, anything else you'd like to tell us? Well, I mean, one of the things that's, that's been very re rewarding about these about this is that um, as a result of these um, these publications, um, NOAA, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, has actually put together an international um, coral reef grant program, and they provide funding now to um, to communities, to uh, non governmental organizations. Um, to actually uh, implement um, these socioeconomic guidelines, and that's been very rewarding. We've done a lot of work um, with NOAA and with um, with countries and, and, and organizations around the world to um, to do this, and it's been very rewarding seeing people and the interest that they have in doing this. And so I, you know, I greatly appreciate the you know NOAA and the U.S. government supporting these these endeavors around the world.